Okay, in this video, I want to explain to you, okay, if you are still dropshipping, if you are like not doing numbers now, okay, do this instead, okay, do this instead, okay. So let me go to the whiteboard, explain to you what to do and like probably like four or five steps, very, very simple, but stop, stop whatever you're doing, okay, uh, think long term, okay, just want to tell you that first, okay, so let's start, okay, if, if you're still dropshipping, for example, okay, um, dropshipping is okay, like it's it's just a business model, you know, a lot of people do it, so it's, it's fine. What I'm saying is that uh, transition to becoming more a legit business and so that uh, branded e-com is going to be your future, okay, stop with the completely 1000% dropshipping types, okay, so, okay, if, if you are starting e-com, like complete noob, right, like complete, complete noob, okay, you, okay, you start with your, your dropshipping first, okay, go ahead, do your dropshipping, okay, do it for like three weeks or so, okay, so the purpose of these three weeks, right? Let me just tell you, the aim of what you're trying to do here, when you run ads and stuff, right? You want to go and get sales. Okay, you want to prove that your business is a business that you actually can make money in this in this product right here, right? So your purpose here is cash flow. Okay, you are trying to produce cash on demand. Okay, so you are proving out the the, the concept, the unit economics. Okay, everything makes sense. If I sell one thing, do I actually uh, produce enough revenue? to maximize, uh, sorry, to produce a profit, okay? Am I providing enough value to the marketplace such that after advertising, after transaction fees and stuff, I'm still making money, okay? So that is the, the concept of what you're trying to uh, really do here when you're dropshipping, okay? And why I say three weeks, right, is because I want you to like run sales up to the point where, okay, it's consistent enough, right? It's consistent enough such that you're comfortable with actually going into a branded e-commerce model, okay? That's number one, and number two as well, um, you're able to actually produce cash to buy your stock, okay? So what you're going to do afterwards is going to be capex uh, intensive, which means uh, capital expenditure. Uh, in accounting terms, it basically just means um, you're just putting up money up front, which means there's risk to you involved, okay? And so you're putting cash in. You want to produce uh, enough positive cash flow, okay? Positive cash flow here, okay? Such that you're able to fund the next stage of your journey, okay? So what is your next stage? Okay, so for, imagine you start your job shipping. You've done it for three weeks, okay? You've produced like, imagine, uh, okay, best case scenario, right? For example, $20,000 in sales, okay? You popped off, okay? And then after product cost everything, right? You have spent 17 k okay? So you made a measly 3 k okay? That is a fantastic sign. You know why? Because it just means that the model is correct, okay? It just means that this is, is works, okay? You have sales, yes, okay? You have cash flow, yes. Unit economics, your profit, yes, okay? So imagine you, you take this 3 k right here, okay? What you want to do, you transition and you go to your supplier, whoever it is in China or the US or whatever it is, right? Okay, you go and tell them, okay, uh, hi, Mr. Supplier, I want to buy 100, 100 units of this product right here, okay? And if you know anything about uh, inventory suppliers and stuff like that, there's something called lead time. Okay, lead time basically means that it takes a certain amount of time for people to actually um, pr produce a product, for example. Okay, so for example, they, they may say, oh, it may take 30 days to produce 30, 35 days or whatever it is, okay? And this is basically lead time right here, okay? There's something called MOQ as well. So MOQ is basically called minimum, minimum order quantity and people, especially wholesalers, okay? Let me just, this term right, right here. Okay, wholesalers, they want you to buy in bulk. Okay, the reason why is because it's, um, it's more worthwhile to do business with you when uh, you're paying them like thousands of dollars instead of just like paying like $40, for example. Okay, so that is what the, the reason of MOQ is, right? So that's why you buy 100 first, okay? So this is your first, essentially your, your not risk, but uh, your first real investment into your business purely because you are purchasing stock, okay? So you're buying stock and the reason why you want to buy stock as well is because your cost, your cost per unit price is going to go down, okay? Which means that your overall net margins of your entire company is going to improve over time which means that you're gonna make more money over time, basically, okay? So your MOQ, you're gonna order, for example, uh, Mr. Supplier, I want 100 units of product A, right? So you give me this MO MOQ, I'm gonna ship this to the warehouse, for example. I'm gonna ship this to the warehouse, and then I'm gonna do something about it, I'm gonna sell it, okay? So because you already have proven these three things here, you have sales, cash flow, and unit economics, right? By doing this, actually, you're reducing the actual like cost of goods sold, your COGS, right? And you're increasing that profitability. Okay, so after this three weeks, you want to sell this 100. And then once you imagine you're selling around like 70 or, or 80, right? And then you only have like, have like a very little in stock in your warehouse, for example, right? Then you go into the next stage of business, okay? Mr. Supplier, I want to order 300, okay? And so as you can see, right, you're not trying to 
you're taking the the biggest pussy move of all time basically you're being very very conservative but you're being smart about your investment and cash flow okay okay the reason why is because when you buy 100 at one time when you buy 300 at one time right imagine the cost per unit price for example is at four dollars okay and people are going to ask you to pay up front okay so if you are very tight on cash flow for example this is going to take you at least twelve hundred dollars in at um, like cash down down payment basically okay so that is why you progressively in a sense you progressively scale up your stock okay this gives you more time to basically produce for example more influencer content right more video content right and also improve your marketing at the same time and also help you do email marketing okay so can you see here how by taking it slow right you're able to slowly build your business right you're able to start from scratch at a very very low spend very very low risk to you you start drop shipping okay you go the three model you progressively scale up your moq and over time right you're going to order more quantity and more quantity at the same time okay so after this i would i would generally say after this you're quite comfortable with the e-commerce model and stuff right uh, but imagine after 500 you said okay we are all comfortable everybody knows how this game runs okay let's go to the next level once again okay so what is the next level after you go 500 okay you go and fight you go and um uh, ask your supplier for 500 once again but what you want to do is do custom okay custom packaging for example and then you do custom logos okay so this will require obviously additional stuff as well purely because uh, the supplier is doing something custom for you so that they maybe even have like a mold in the factory or they need to like uh you know produce your stamp for example and this stuff costs additional money right additional boxes and stuff that that looks very very good basically okay and so uh, after this, right, you should be able to have like a uh, very, very good business purely because you have um, basically built out your entire sales channel right here, right? Okay, we have sales coming in. Okay, so we have not a lot of financial stress. Okay, we have additional content that we have built over, for example, this is month number one. Let me say this is month number one. This is month number two. This is month number three. Okay, imagine this is month zero, right? So in a matter of three months, you have built an e-commerce model that has proven sales, right? Unit economics. Okay, you have progressively scaled up so that you're not obviously at risk all the time. You are making investment based on the cash flow that you're producing. So you do not lose uh, money over time. And then also at the same time, you're building real brand equity. Okay, and so when you build brand equity like this, when you progressively push yourself and challenge yourself to become a real e-commerce business owner, right? You not only like build a real business, okay? People are going to start coming back to your store. Okay, and that's what people don't talk about. Okay, it's retention, okay? Retention is basically when people buy from you one time and then they're like, okay, that was a good experience that I have with these people. Let me buy from them another time. Okay. And that is where most of the money is being made. Okay. That is where most of the profit is being made. Okay. So that is why, let me just say, okay, if you have never done this before, obviously it's going to be challenging. But what I'm saying is month zero to month one, for example. Okay. I want you to focus on growth. Okay. Revenue. Okay. Proving out the model. Once you come in this space here, obviously, then you worry about lifetime value, okay? LTV, lifetime value, as well as you worry about, how do I say this, retention? Yeah, retention is here, as well as like uh, refunds, stuff like this, okay? So the reason why you, you should worry about this stuff here, right, is because uh, you know for a fact the product here, that your custom stuff right here should be your, your best products whatsoever, okay? At, at the start, right, your, your products may have product quality and stuff like that. Obviously, try to minimize that as much as possible. Uh, but where, once you start getting into volume, once you start getting into custom stuff, you really need to protect your brand equity such that your lifetime value is uh, protected over time as well. Okay? So hopefully this gives you a good skeleton or outline of what you should be doing. Uh, but basically, um, if you're asking, okay, if I'm still dropshipping now, what, what should I do next? This is what you should do next. Okay? If you've never even started e -com, this is what you should do. Okay, if you're already a branded e-com guy, right, and you're here, okay, then I want you to book a call, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, how do I say this? This is the progression of what e-commerce looks like, okay? E-commerce shouldn't be drop ship till you die. That makes no sense whatsoever, okay? So this is the model, and not only this is the model, this is the future. Everything here, right, it's go like drop ship is going to die. Like there's no way it's going to be sustainable anymore, okay? So... It's, be it's best you better transition quickly if you're still doing this. Um, but once you understand how to do this, right, like everything becomes uh, increasingly easier as well. Okay? Can. Yeah, that's pretty much it from me. Okay, I know it's around 10 minutes. Okay? So um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the description or the comment section below. Uh, I will reply. Okay? And if you need help with your advertising and stuff, 
uh, I will put some links in the description. And uh, if you're interested, you can book a call with us as well. Okay? Yeah, that's pretty much it from me. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I will see you in the next one.